the largest city in Western Europe and one of the richest. There are seven million people living here and finding a home is a real challenge because... This week we're searching for a flat in London. Which is one of the most expensive places to buy property in the world. Our first time buyer, Natasha Worrell, has been flat hunting for 12 months and she's getting desperate. When I was first looking, I was looking for a two bed for about um, 170,000. Now, a year on, I'm looking for, um, I'm looking up to about 215 and I'll be lucky to get a, a one bed for that round here now. Natasha wants to live here, south of the river, where a one bed flat can go for as much as £315,000. That's 100,000 more than Natasha's got to spend. Wandsworth, Clapham, Battersea and Ballam were all originally separate villages that now form neighbouring areas of South London. In the 80s, yuppie money made Battersea, Clapham and Wandsworth pricey and fashionable. Now Ballam's following suit. It's hip, it's happening and that's why it costs so much to live here. Prices have more than doubled in the last five years. I love Ballam. It's got a really nice young vibe. It's got some great bars and restaurants are starting to open. You're next to Clapham and Brixton where there's a lot going on as well. And the transport links are great. I mean, to get to work, it's eight stops on the Northern Line. My ideal property would be a first floor, uh, probably purpose-built Victorian style masonette if I could get it. So it's got to be pretty spacious. I'd love a garden if I could get one. Mm -hmm. Natasha's seen an incredible 100 flats over the last year, and although she's put in five offers, they've all fallen through. She's been setting her sights on Ballam, but is she being too narrow-minded? I'm really going to have to sort of widen my choices and look further afield, Clapham, Battersea, Wandsworth, those sort of areas, and hopefully find something within my price range there. Nice to meet you. Hello there. Very nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. We understand you've had a few problems looking for a flat. Well, I've had an absolute nightmare, so I hope you can both help me out. You wanted to spend £215,000 tops mm -hmm. and have good transportation into work. First up, we've managed to pull something out of the bag. On the borders of Ballam, we found a property she hasn't seen yet. It's one of the smartest addresses in a leafy conservation area. We're on Natasha's home turf here in Rutherden Road. We're having a look at a first floor, two bedroom flat with an asking price of 199950 it's bright, spacious and full of period features. It has two bedrooms at the back, something Natasha always thought she couldn't afford. There we are, Natasha. After you, through to the sitting room. Oh, this is a bright room. I like the square bay windows. It's really nice. Yeah, it gives loads of light. What you can't see is that behind that bookshelf is a hatch through to the kitchen. Oh, really? You could knock through that wall to mm -hmm. the kitchen and have a great big kitchen living room. This was originally the kitchen and lounge was originally one room, I take it. This or... probably would have been the first floor drawing room of the house. Right. If you are making structural changes to a leasehold property, you do have to have your freeholder's permission. This isn't structural, but I would always advise getting freeholder's permission. Better to be safe than sorry. The second bedroom needn't stay that way. It could be a cosy alternative to the open plan space at the front. And there's still an impressive master bedroom. Oh, that's sweet. Stairs down into... It's no, quite it's different, nice. isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's got a really nice feeling about it. Wow, what's that going on in the garden? Well, the person downstairs is doing huge works. It crossed our mind that this... If there ever was a time to apply for a roof terrace... Now would be. This would be it. Oh, my God! Well, you can see straight down because they've taken the ceiling down. Oh, my God, that's so bizarre. Yeah, but is it because they've taken the ceiling down? <gasps> that's quite scary, I've got to say. Phil! <laughs> <laughs> so are we on the right lines here? My initial impressions of the lounge and the kitchen kind of threw me off, but um, it's, it's grown on me, definitely. Mm. Now, I always say that people make their first decision in the first 11 seconds, mm. so I might be proved wrong in this case. Whereas Ballam's on the way up, neighbouring Clapham's arrived and it's easy for Natasha to travel to work. But she's always felt she couldn't afford to buy here. She's wrong. We've managed to find somewhere within her budget. Well, we're here in Devereux Road, which is in the heart of Nappy Valley, so called because of its popularity with young families. This two-bed flat is on the market at 225,000, but it's been on the market for a while, so we think the owners might take an offer. It's split level with the main bedroom upstairs, 
but how does it compare with the Ballam flat for floor space? Ooh, a bit of a tight squeeze as that you come in. That is a bit of a tight squeeze, isn't it? Not as big as the last one, is it? Not as spacious. Next door has a bay window oh, really? that we've lost here. So that is making the room... Feel smaller. Yeah. Sure. But that's the sort of details as we go through the weekend that you've got to try and remember that um, mm. to, in order to compare one flat with, with the next one. Yeah, sure. The main reception feels small and the kitchen's no bigger, but there's space to be used in the second bedroom. You could make it into the bathroom. Right. What you would do is you'd knock down this wall, you'd move the bathroom up to here, so you'd have a small bathroom but with a nice big window, which is mm. always nice. Mm. And then you'd make what's the current bathroom and quite a large chunk of this room into a dining area which was off your sitting room. So open up into the sitting yeah. room. But losing rooms can affect resale. Find out local trends. Here in London, open plan living is in vogue and so could mean a quicker sale. I do like the spit level. It gives you it feels like you're almost in a house, doesn't it? it really means you go upstairs oh. to bed. Guy, I'm not sure, because this is sort of in the eaves, isn't it? I'm not too sure. It's a lovely big window, it's very peaceful, the mm, outlook is very green. Lovely gardens, but... This is the hatch to the oh, wow. attic space. Now, it might be possible to build into that space a bit, mm. but you still don't like that feeling. No, I just think it's quite a low ceiling, isn't it? Top floor flats in these Victorian buildings give excellent opportunities for adding value by converting the loft space, and it's certainly possible here. The thing is, the cost of extensions and improvements has simply not risen at the same rate as the cost of the properties themselves. So if you're looking at a place that seems small, keep an eye out for the potential to extend. What did you make of the flat? Well, I think in terms of space, the rooms weren't quite big enough for me. Um, the lounge and the bedroom. The kitchen was lovely, so not quite what I was looking for, actually. Well, Nappy Valley may not be right for Natasha, but another part of Clapham is worth a look. Further north, nearer to the bars and shops she likes, we're just a stone's throw from one of South London's most famous parks. This is Grandison Road, 50 yards from Clapham Common, and we're here to see a first floor one bedroom flat, which is on the market at 50 pounds short of 200,000. These conversions all have communal areas like stairs and hallways, but who owns them, who maintains them, who pays for them? You might think the freeholder's responsible, wrong. Although it's up to him to make sure these areas are kept in good condition, it's you and the other leaseholders in the block who will have to foot the bills. The communal areas are a bit, they're not scruffy, but a bit dated, aren't they? They're clean, they're clean. Oh, wow, this is uh, very imposing. Would I be able to put floorboards down in here? There are existing floorboards beneath this carpet. Whether you can expose them or not is, is a matter for your solicitor to look into. I would hazard a guess that you wouldn't be able to. It is possible to put something called a floating floor down, and, and that, is, in essence, it, it floats across the top of this one without touching the structure, and it's the structure of the building that the sound travels down. This kitchen looks new, but close up we can see it's a revamp. The units are, in fact, quite old. Look beyond surface decor to make sure you don't pay over the odds. I want you to come through to the bedroom. If you look out of the window, mm. you'll see there's an easily accessible flat roof. And you might think, oh, I can make that into a roof yeah, terrace. Yeah. But that wouldn't be the case. This is a conservation area. To get any planning permission passed, you need a planning precedent to have been set. Mm. It's very, very rare right. to do something and to be the first in a street to do it. And the verdict? It's not bad, maybe. Hmm. Maybe we should try somewhere different now. On to Battersea, home of that historic landmark, Battersea Power Station. The modern landmarks are just as dramatic, and a penthouse here in Richard Rogers's Montevetro Tower costs five million. With our slightly lower budget, we're looking at a top floor pad near Battersea Park. This is a one bedroom flat, just come onto the market at 215,000. Even though that's pushing Natasha's budget, Kirsty and I reckon it's great value for money. I think it's a good-sized kitchen for a one-bed flat. It is quite intimate. <laughs> yeah, you could say that. You are very close to your neighbours, and in a lot of these flats, the bathroom is accessed via the kitchen. This has got a passage behind the kitchen, right. so you tend to see people streaking through. <laughs> in their pyjamas. <laughs> and less. <laughs> mm, could be interesting. <laughs> well, if Natasha's more modest than that, there's a discreet option for the bathroom. 
but I would like to shift the kitchen, which is just through this wall, right. down here, and put the bathroom up at the other end. Mm. Are you talking about a lot of money to do that? I reckon it would probably cost £15,000 really? to do it now. Mm. But I think it would add at least 25, if not £30,000 really? to the value of the Yes. And this is a sort of flat that I want to stay in for a good sort yeah. of four or five years. This was a two-bed flat, but the smaller one's been removed to create a more spacious reception room. Head up the stairs here. Oh, this is... Oh, wow. Nice size lounge. It's 18 foot. You'll notice there that there's a line. Can you see it? Yeah, yeah. And that's where the second bedroom was. Yeah, it's a really good size. It's a very good size. And the steps give you that feeling of space when it's, you come up. It feels cool. like a maisonette. I, I'm a fan of top Same floor here. flats. No noise. One of the great things about these flats is that there's no one opposite you. That's mm. commercial. So at the weekends, at night, there's no one there. So you don't have to have nets. <laughs> I found out that the office building has actually got permission to turn into flats. I don't know whether Natasha would want to live right opposite a building site for a year. But the developers are still waiting for final approval. Now Natasha likes the area, how's the flat measuring up? So what did you think? A great flat, it's got good potential, needs some TLC but very spacious, um, great locations. But all in all, a positive. Yeah, no, definitely, good potential, nice flat. <laughs> End of day one and we've got four first floor flats under our belts. Are we heading in the right direction? It's been great to see different properties in different areas I haven't looked at before. I mean, it's opened my eyes, which is great. Definite favourite, I think, is the one in Battersea. Just the location's fantastic. I mean, we're near the bridge, near the park. Well, it has got so many things going for it, that flat. Mm. It's top floor, it's south facing, it's got the chair and the freehold. Yep, definitely. Phil's gasping for a drink, so I think we should <laughs> go and have one. Your shout, Kirsty.